One minute countdown starts. Welcome everyone to the 2022 AUCD for All Virtual Gown, celebrating leadership and inclusive science. AUCD thanks JP Morgan Chase and Company as the lead sponsor of the 2022 AUCD for All Virtual Gown. Good evening. I'm Danny Armstrong, Director of the Mailman Center for Child Development at the University of Miami and this year's president of the AUCD board. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2022 AUCD for All Gala, celebrating leadership in inclusive science. I'm a white man with silver hair and glasses, wearing a blue shirt, a blue tie, and a brown jacket. This year's gala is a celebration of our work on inclusion in science that really took off during our annual conference this fall. It represents our next step in promoting the inclusion of individuals with disabilities in all aspects of research. As participants, thought leaders, advisors, research collaborators, and authors of research findings, our gala celebrates our efforts within our organization, as well as provides us with the opportunity to engage with others outside the AUCD community to promote better understanding and inclusion in the research process. I hope you will enjoy the program tonight and celebrate with us the importance this gala has for our mission. Thank you, Danny. On behalf of the entire network, thank you for your leadership during your term as AUCD's current board president. And welcome everyone to our seventh annual gala celebrating leadership in inclusive science. My name is John Cheetah. I'm a white man with graying short hair and beard, wearing glasses and a blue shirt and tie with a brown suit jacket. We are grateful that so many of you are attending this evening and engaging in our virtual event. I'm thankful to the AUCD staff for developing yet another virtual and accessible gala. While we are disheartened we could not safely hold an in-person event, we are delighted to still celebrate those who are championing inclusive research. As a network, we must not forget the importance of celebrating our successes. I'd like to recognize the commitment and support of our gala committee who helped us envision a unique and creative virtual experience. Their expertise, time, and support are vital to this event's success. You can find a complete list of committee members on the gala website at www.aucdforall.org. It's also true that this gala and the work of AUCD wouldn't be possible without the longtime commitment and partnership of our sponsors. I wanna thank our longtime leadership level sponsor, JP Morgan Chase, as well as champion level supporters, Centene and Anthem, who have supported the work of AUCD for many years. So too have Walmart, Biogen and Airbnb at the advocate level. I also wanna thank our new and growing partnerships with championship level sponsors, Microsoft and Pharma. A slide with the logos and names of these and all our sponsors is now being shown. And you can find the full list on our GALA website. We're grateful for all our supporters, including those individuals who gave online for this GALA tonight. Your support means the world to us. I'm pleased now to introduce our MC for the evening, Andres Gallegos, Chairman of the National Council on Disability. Andres has the honor of advising the President 
Congress, and other federal agencies on disability policy. His work and that of the Council align perfectly with our own. Thank you for joining us, Andres. AUCD thanks our Champion Circle sponsors, Pharma, Centene, and Microsoft. Thank you, John, for that wonderful introduction. And good evening to you all. Muy buenas noches. I am Andres Gallegos, a 61-year-old Hispanic male with fair complexion, exceedingly gray hair, black square frame glasses, and I'm wearing a black pinstripe suit jacket with a light gray shirt and a red paisley bow tie. I am so excited to serve as your MC and to welcome you all to the 2022 AUCD Virtual Gala. It's been exciting to watch AUCD's progress over the last few years, tackling issues of equity and inclusion. Under Tawara Goods' leadership, AUCD's 2020 conference made significant contributions to the field, calling out the need to define health equity in a disability context. The 2021 conference sought to bridge the gap between research and lived experience. All of these efforts acknowledge the pervasive and systemic barriers people with disabilities face and have begun to identify a constructive path forward, a path that requires inclusive science, which is the theme of tonight's gala. As the American legal scholar Kimberly Crenshaw reminds us, if you don't have a lens that's been trained to look at how various forms of discrimination come together, then you're unlikely to develop a set of policies that will be as inclusive as they need to be. Inclusive science is not just researchers taking into account the needs of people with disabilities or the needs of an intersected community of people with disabilities and people of color or people with disabilities and the LGBTQ community. But it is also a deliberate effort to recruit and include researchers with disabilities to spearhead that research. It also includes in fostering an environment within the scientific community that welcomes disability and encourages those among them to self-disclose disability without fear of stigma or repercussions. Now, I'm proud to share with you that our agency, the National Council on Disability, recently released a health equity framework for all people with disabilities. It is a blueprint for the administration, Congress, and federal agencies to follow in order to address the decades-long, ever-growing health disparities existing between people with disabilities and our non-disabled counterparts. We focus on achieving health equity as attaining and maintaining good health is of critical importance to all, but for us, it is the predicate to our ability to live independent, self-directed, fulfilling lives. We are fond of saying at the National Council on Disability that it is the predicate to our ability to live, our ability to learn, and our ability to work and earn. It consists of 39 discrete components, but we've identified four core components from which all others flow from. Designation of all people with disabilities as a special medically underserved population. Now that is of critical importance because it gains us the benefits associated with that designation, which among other things includes federal funding for health centers like federally qualified health centers to care for us and to treat us, access to student loan repayment to incentivize physicians to focus on our community and additional incentives for physicians to treat us in the form of higher CMS reimbursement rates for physician services, and preferences given to research at federal agencies, including the National Institutes of Health that studies medically underserved populations. Now that's just the first core component. Enforceable federal regulations adopting the US Access Board's 2017 standards for accessible medical diagnostic equipment is the second core component. Now we need those regulations to address the needs of persons with mobility disabilities and paralysis who are unable to independently transfer 
onto examination tables and examination chairs and to other surfaces. The absence of such equipment results in people with mobility disabilities who use mobility devices like my wheelchair to receiving examinations while we remain in our wheelchairs or receiving no examination whatsoever. And more often than not, receiving an examination while remaining in our wheelchairs results in less thorough examinations than those what people who are not disabled receive. Enhanced data collection across the lifespan of people with disabilities is another core component. Why? Data matters, which this audience certainly doesn't need to be convinced of. Now, data matters because we matter. Disability status, information relating to healthcare encounters by people with disabilities is critically important to detect trends, to formulate interventions, and to create public health response in times of a healthcare crisis like, oh, I don't know, maybe a pandemic. And the last core component is the creation, the and adoption, and implementation of disability clinical care education and training. As you know, federally financed medical healthcare professional and allied health professional schools, as well as postgraduate residency and fellowship programs, fail to incorporate disability clinical care into curricula or training. Now, while some medical schools have disability competency training programs in place, the overwhelming number of schools do not. That must end. The lack of comprehensive disability clinical care education and disability competency training among medical and other healthcare professionals perpetuates the significant discrimination in healthcare against people with disabilities. It is inconceivable to us that physicians can become board certified in all specialties without having seen or have treated or received any formal education in treating 26% of our country's population. We must also look to provide disability-specific curricula in undergraduate and graduate public health programs and healthcare administration programs, both at the undergraduate and graduate level. It's not enough for physicians to be trained, but we need for those occupying C-suites in hospitals healthcare systems, and in health insurance companies to learn of us, to see us as something other than what needs to be cured or what needs to be avoided. Now, the National Council of Disability did not create the health equity framework on our own. We assembled what we love to call our dream team, 14 individuals who have dedicated their professional lives to addressing accessible healthcare, healthcare discrimination, and health equity for people with disabilities. I am thrilled that we are honoring tonight and have as presenters in tonight's gala, some of our dream team members. So let's get this party started. Vamos, let's get going and officially start the 2022 AUCD virtual gala program. We have an incredible lineup of honorees and speakers to recognize this evening. If you're accessing the program on a platform that has a chat feature, please use it. Use it to congratulate our honorees, to say hi to other attendees, and to join in on the celebration. Also post comments and photos on social media using the hashtag AUCD for all. Now that's AUCD, the number four, A-L-L. While tonight's theme is inclusive science, it is also ladies' night. We have a lineup of accomplished badass women, presenters, and honorees, and I am pleased to start with the introduction of Kara Ayers. Kara is an assistant professor with the Department of Pediatrics at the University of Cincinnati and the associate director of the University of Cincinnati Center for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities. She is a very accomplished researcher who also serves on the Board of Governors for the Patient Centered Outcome Research Institute. Kara, thank you for joining us. 
Thank you, Andres, for that warm welcome. I'm Dr. Kara Ayers. I'm a white woman with shoulder length brown hair. I'm wearing a navy sparkly dress and I'm seated in my wheelchair. I'm the associate director at our University of Cincinnati UCED. And tonight, I am thrilled to be here with my AUCD family to recognize AUCD for All nominee, Dr. Nikayla Cook. Dr. Cook had a storied career at the NIH, and now she is the executive director at the Patient Centered Outcomes Research Institute, or PCORI. She's a renowned cardiologist that has focused her career on leading scientific initiatives that engage patients clinicians, and other healthcare stakeholders. Throughout her career, Dr. Cook has worked to enhance diversity and equity in research and practice. She's passionate about issues of health disparities, including those experienced by people with disabilities, and our shared goal of achieving health equity. We're thrilled to honor Dr. Cook and recognize all of her hard work to achieve equity and her willingness and passion to continue to walk with us towards that goal. Hi, I'm Nikayla Cook, a middle-aged Black female wearing a teal blazer and top today, and I couldn't be more excited to be with you. Thank you for that kind introduction, Kara, and for everything you do as a member of PCORI's Board of Governors. Your extensive experience and research related to disabilities and inclusion and the strong voice that you've brought to PCORI have been invaluable as we've developed our new national priorities for health and our larger strategic plan. I am so grateful as well to the board and staff of AUCD for naming me and PCORI one of the Leadership for All honorees at this year's gala. This is truly an honor and one that I share with the leadership and staff at PCORI and the many others who have inspired my shared commitment and shaped my thinking over the years on the importance of including all populations in the health research enterprise. AUCD has been a strong supporter of PCORI for many years as a steering member of the Partnership to Improve Patient Care, and as part of the Friends of PCORI Reauthorization Coalition that contributed significantly to our successful reauthorization by Congress in 2019. As you know, included in that reauthorization was a new research priority for PCORI, research on intellectual and developmental disabilities. We were delighted to have been given this important new mandate by Congress, and we moved quickly to begin important work guided by an internal work group that's dedicated to driving forward intellectual and developmental disabilities related funding and stakeholder engagement efforts. This is an organization-wide initiative involving nearly 40 people across PCORI, and we've made a long-term commitment to this new research priority. Since reauthorization, AUCD has continued to be a valuable partner and resource for PCORI. We frequently reach out to the organization for input on potential research topics and to help us understand evidence gaps as we develop research funding opportunities. And I know my colleague, Caitlin McCormick, was honored to have been invited to speak at your annual conference this past fall. These efforts are now translating into a growing research portfolio related to intellectual and developmental disabilities. As of February this year, PCORI has funded 24 research projects for a total of about $80 million and 51 engagement projects for a total of about $10 million. We've also held a number of convenings to engage stakeholders in specific topics and our 2020 and 2021 annual meetings each included a special session on engaging people with intellectual and developmental disabilities in research. All of this specific funded research should enhance our ability to provide patients, clinicians, and caregivers with the information they need to make the best decisions they can. But I think this priority research area resonates with PCORI's mission on a much deeper level and reinforces the central importance of two key pillars of our work, patient-centeredness and patient engagement. The intellectual and developmental disabilities community has historically been is underserved in research. And as with all underserved communities, it is imperative that we use all of the tools in our engagement toolbox to be sure that we understand their needs and fund the research needed to address them. I know that AUCD has been on a mission in recent years to define and achieve equity in a disability context. And in this, you have PCORI's very strong support. Achieving health equity is one of PCORI's five new national priorities for health 
And this goal will underpin our work for the foreseeable future as we work with partners like AUCD toward health equity for all people. In closing, I'd like to particularly thank AUCD Executive Director John Cheetah for his invitation to me today and for his partnership with PCORI over many years. I applaud the theme of your gala in 2022, celebrating leadership and inclusive science. And I wish you all the best for this event and for our continuing partnership in 2022 and beyond. Thank you again. AUCD thanks our Influencers Circle sponsors, Anthem and Pfizer. Thank you again for joining us this evening for what has already been a wonderful dialogue into celebrating leadership in inclusive science. My name is Haidar Rana. I am a white male in my 40s. I'm wearing glasses, a black cap, and a green shirt. And I'm in an office setting. I'm here tonight to share a bit about my journey with you. I was diagnosed as autistic or a person on the autism spectrum late in life. Uh, being autistic, a person on the autism spectrum in a society, in a world that's not designed for people with autism or autistic is, is a challenge. It's not easy. And after getting the services I needed in my community, I, I began my journey into self-advocacy. I uh, participated in a three-day intensive leadership program for adults with disabilities cross disabilities, Project SALT, self-advocate leadership training program. It's uh, here at the University of Miami Nailman Center for Child Development. We are both a LEND and a USED. And it was during this three-day leadership intensive that I learned so much about disability, disability history, disability, disability culture, uh, the fight for our rights as a community of people with disabilities. Uh, Leadership, you know, leadership, legislation, uh, teamwork, many things. Uh, and then I went on to do LEND. Uh, I became aware of the injustices people with disabilities experience. And as our, our, our LEND, you said, first LEND self-advocate, I went on to mentor other um, self-advocates who followed after me. I've been very involved with our team here. Many of them are clinicians, staff. Um, I, my tasks are mostly administrative and with the, our leadership in initiatives or in, in our pipeline leadership program. When the pandemic happened, um, it was when the pandemic began, uh, I was reminded of a quote by Winston Churchill, never let a good crisis go to waste. So when things got really bad, I decided to step up, help my team, and participated in many uh, uh, healthcare, uh, public health initiatives for vaccine confidence, vaccine accessibility, whether it was a structure of a place where people with disabilities needed to go to access the vaccines that they needed or the treatments that they needed, whether it was transportation. So I became very involved with our team um, they valued my input, my opinions, my ideas. Sometimes I'd throw out some ideas that were like a little wild out there. It's like, okay, what do you, you all think about this? And it was a moment of, of where we all work together, put our minds together. I, I put my lived experience as a person on the spectrum. And it would, it's been a, quite a journey for, for all of us here at, at Melman Center. And it's been a journey for all of us, people with with disabilities who, who participate in, in our pipeline leadership program here at our land you said. Our journey will continue and my journey will continue. And I look forward to what I can do in our world of disability for public health, for all people with disabilities, with my land center and overall with AUCD. Please consider helping with all of our journeys and donate to the cause as AUCD works to continue our conversations around inclusivity and equity in the disability workspace. Thank you. AUCD thanks our Advocate Circle sponsors, Partnership to Improve Patient Care, Airbnb, Biogen, and Walmart. My name is Dr. Anjali Fover Pratt. I am the director of the National Institute of Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research, NIDLER, within the Administration for Community Living. Today, I'm wearing a black and white shirt with a black blazer, and I'm a brown skinned woman with black hair, and I'm sitting in a manual wheelchair. 
nothing about us without us, a famed mantra for our community, also means in research. Research must include all of us across the entire research enterprise too. From investigators, the people doing the research, to peer reviewers, the people deciding who gets funding, to the project officers, the people supporting the people applying and doing the research. Neidler wants to include more people with disabilities as peer reviewers. The disability and chronic illness community is so diverse, rich, and beautiful, and should be inclusive of those of us with apparent and non-apparent disabilities across disability groups, intellectual disability, physical disability, psychological, sensory, learning, and chronic illness, including COVID-19 long haulers. When I say that disabled people must be included at every part of the research process, what does that mean? To me, this means being at the table to brainstorm what should be researched. What questions do we have about the disability community? What questions do we have about life, community living, employment, health, interactions with professionals that are about our lives as people with disabilities? Any question that is being asked by any researcher, are they remembering to include us in their work too? If we are at the table when these ideas are being talked about and planned, we can help to remind the research team to not forget about us, to not forget about our friends, to not forget about our friends who use screen readers, our friends who use AAC, our friends who use wheelchairs, or our friends who have more than one disability, our friends with a disability who also are LGBTQ, our friends like me who have brown skin and a disability. This also means being a co-researcher, helping to plan out how to answer those great questions we wish we knew answers to. How are we going to get those answers? Are we going to ask people to show us a glimpse of their everyday life through video recording? Are we going to talk with them and hear their stories about the topic or the research question? Are we going to talk to groups of people about their experiences? Are we going to watch people doing an activity to see how they do it or what ad adaptations they make on their own? Are we going to ask people to fill out a survey? Are we going to ask people to try out a device or a tool and tell us what works well or what doesn't? These are all ways of getting answers to the questions. But if we have people with disabilities helping to plan this, we are the experts and can ask questions of how will my friend who is blind do this survey? How will my friend who uses a talker device share her experiences to the group? How will my friend without a smartphone record where he is going and take pictures? How will my autistic friend who speaks Spanish be included in this work? All of these experiences are important and too often researchers do not think about these scenarios and our friends or us in the process, which is why we must be there. If we are not, then research occurs that does not include people with disabilities or research occurs that only includes individuals with certain types of disabilities instead of all of our friends. Breaking this down, disability hierarchy is real, and sometimes certain disabled voices, often white, physically disabled, wheelchair users, are the voices included instead of all of our friends, or instead of a mix including black and brown disabled voices, voices of individuals with higher support needs, voices of those who do not use spoken English at all, like American Sign Language, or may use a different spoken language altogether. Some people may need a little help to fill out a survey or to have the directions explained more simply or who need to type answers into the interview instead of vocalizing them. Then the fun part, people with disabilities should be involved in doing the research. First, we know how to find other people with disabilities. Second, no matter what in life, especially disabled life, the best, most carefully thought out plans, something will always go wrong. I bet you know what I mean flat tire on a wheelchair? Transportation shows up late? Well, I have a secret. Even the best thought out research plans go wrong too. And people with disabilities are awesome problem solvers. We know how to adapt and think five steps ahead to ensure accessibility and inclusion of our friends. So this makes us incredible researchers at doing the research because we can help to adjust when things go a little bit wrong or to adjust the plan. We can also share how we were involved in the process, help with writing up what we learned, share what we learned with others. We can and should be involved in every single step. So yes, nothing about us without us includes research. You can do this. We all can do this together. And it's okay to need a little extra support to do these things. 
My challenge is for researchers without disabilities to welcome us as co-researchers and for those with disabilities to be brave and to reach out to researchers in the AUCD or Nidler networks and say, I want to be involved in research. This is inclusive science. Andres Gallegos. Anjali, thank you so very much for those very important messages about the value of inclusive research. And now, to introduce our next awardee is Dr. Gloria Kron. Those of you familiar with AUCD know that she is a past AUCD board president and was for many years director of organs USED and served as the director of the Division of Human Development and Disability in the National Center on Birth Defects and Developmental Disabilities at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. She's also co-authored numerous journal articles with our next award winner. Gloria, thank you for joining us. I'm Gloria Cron. I'm an older white woman with shoulder length platinum hair. I'm wearing a teal blue top and a big smile because it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Lisa Iazzoni, who is being recognized as the Leadership in Inclusive Science honoree. Dr. Iazzoni is a physician researcher whose work in health services research has profoundly advanced the health and health care of people with disabilities. I want to comment on four things that are remarkable about Lisa and her work. The first is that the focus of her work is always relevant. She addresses the issues of real meaning to people with disabilities, healthcare providers, and health systems. The second is that the science of her research is rigorous, so the findings are not in dispute. The third is her capacity to communicate. She's an amazingly good thinker and can explain concepts in ways that her audiences can understand. And finally, her generosity in collaborating, from working with international policy groups to students who are just beginning their careers, she engages with attention and passion. She has achieved so much for so many. I give you Dr. Lisa Iazzoni. Warmest thanks for naming me a Leadership for All honoree for the 2022 Association of University Centers on Disabilities Gala. My name is Lisa Iazzoni, and for those of you who don't know me, I am a white woman with short curly gray hair. I'm wearing a gray sweater, and I have on a blue and purple scarf. What a joy and privilege to be honored for something that I love doing and has given me insights into my own lived experiences. 24 or so years ago, when I told my then boss that I was switching from my methodological health services research to investigate disability, he asked how I could possibly be objective. Over the years, I've benefited from wonderful interdisciplinary colleagues without whom I could not have done my work. In his kind email notifying me of this award, John Tashida noted findings from our recent survey of physicians about their perceptions of and experiences with caring for people with disability. These findings and the revelations of persistent stigmatization and the lack of physician knowledge of the Americans with Disabilities Act have caused quite a stir. My friends in the disability community say to me, Lisa, we already knew this. You haven't told me anything new. And that is true. But my response is, at least now we have a number. 82% of physicians think people with significant disability have worse quality of life than other people. And 71% of physicians do not know the proper approach for determining reasonable accommodations for disabled patients. Making policy change, I have seen, often requires two things, numbers and stories. The numbers indicate the size of the problem and the stories convey the human cost. Over my career, I have conducted at least 300 research interviews with people with disability and their generosity in speaking with me and telling their stories is what has sustained my career and passion for my research. 
in my most recent work, Making Their Days Happen. My goal is to give voice to people who are largely invisible, people with significant disability who live alone or lack the family and friends to assist with their activities of daily living, and the paid personal care assistants who support them in their homes and communities behind closed doors, especially in this pandemic. In that work, I try to use the stories I heard from disabled people and personal assistance services workers to make the point that all policy is personal, has effects on real people, be it policies relating to Medicaid, housing, transportation, Nurse Practice Act regulations, all policies. There is still so much to be done to give the disabled people needing these supports and the generally low wage workers, typically women of color, who provide these supports the dignity they both deserve. I hope that I can continue to contribute to these critical efforts by making their voices heard. Again, thank you for this honor. AUCD thanks our Friend Circle sponsors, T-Mobile, Vault, New Additions Consulting, Kessler Foundation, and Kennedy Krieger Institute. John Sheeta. Thank you, Dr. Iazzoni, for those comments and for the countless research studies you've done over the last few decades to identify the disability experience in today's healthcare system, looking at access to services, but also the challenges that people with disabilities experience and a reminder that there is still work to be done to make improvements in today's system. We acknowledge your work and celebrate your success. Next, I would like to introduce a playwright and storyteller, an author who continues to write plays and tell tales, traveling around the globe, largely in a disability context. He lives with a disability himself, and tonight, will tell us a tale of inclusion and belonging and link to our theme of inclusive science. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Kling. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Kling, and I'm a storyteller out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, I have frosty colored hair and uh, glasses on and a gray jacket and a white shirt and tie. Uh, Also, Um, My arms are different than each other and maybe different than yours. My left arm, I have four fingers on this side and no thumb, uh, and it's shorter than my other arm. But my right arm um, hasn't moved in 20 years. I was in a motorcycle accident. And I usually tell people right off the bat because kids will really want to know what's up with my arms. And I tell adults, too, because they're out there. I wonder if he knows about his arms. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I know. So and there, there is a really big difference between being born with a disability and achieving one later in life. I I remember years ago, I was in Ireland with my mom. My mom called me up and she said, uh, I heard it's hard to travel when you're 80 years old. I'm 79, we're going to Ireland. So we went to Ireland and we're on this boat and I'm trying to climb up this ladder. And of course, with my arms, I'm having a really hard time. And all of a sudden this boat captain turns to me and this guy hasn't said anything in all week. And he goes, every man goes out of his mind in his own way. I'm thinking, yeah, and everybody goes into their mind in their own way, too. And a couple of days later, I'm sitting in a pub with a guy from Germany, and he can't believe I'm a storyteller. He's like, there's jobs for that? And I go, yeah. And he couldn't believe there was a, such a thing as a storyteller. And I go, okay, if you could tell a story, well, what story would you tell? Well, he says, I would never tell a story. I go, okay, if you could write something, if you could write anything, what would you write? Oh, oh, <laughs> he gets all dreamy, and he goes, a manual, oh, to write something and have someone do it. And that's when I learned there are story people and there are manual people. And this is for the story people out there among us. Uh, We give our lives value through our struggles and our struggles voice through our stories. I know a really important part of AUCD is storytelling. And that really heartens me because it's how we change. It's how we see the world. I know When I can tell a story about something, it doesn't control me any longer. It's how I see the world. There's a great saying from Zimbabwe, until the lion tells the story, the hunter 
will always be the hero. And it's really true. Uh, when I was a kid, though, there were two kinds of fairy tales. Fairy tales I hated and fairy tales I hadn't heard yet. Because it always ended up bad for the guy with a disability. And uh, my grandma would go, no, 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 Kevin. No, stories can go any way you want them to go. That's why they were called folk tales, because they changed with the folks. And this is what a story that my grandmother told me. And it's about the days when pots and pans could talk, which indeed they still do. And there was a man that would go to the river every day and fill two pots with water and bring them home. Well, one day, a small crack developed in one of the pots. And as time went on, that crack widened until by the time the man got home, all the water had leaked out of the pot. So one day, the pot turns to the man and says, look, every day you take me to the river, every day that water leaks out, would you please replace me with another pot? And the man turned to the pot and said, look down the trail. And the pot looked down the trail. And on the side of the trail with the pot that didn't have a crack, it was craggy and rocky and barren. But on the side of the path with the pot with the crack, wildflowers grew. And the man said, every day you water those flowers. Every day you make my difficult journey beautiful. I think I'll keep you. And with that, my grandmother would wrap her large Teutonic arms around me and say, I think we'll keep you. So those were the stories I grew up as a kid. And one of my favorite words is belonging. I knew I belonged. And belonging is actually two words, being and longing, being somewhere and longing to be somewhere else at the same time. It's a paradox, but it's when we are most happy, when we are at risk and we're also safe when we have a nest and we have challenge, it's when we are at our best and most creative. Um, I work with a theater company now called Interact, and it's a company of uh, performers with varying abilities. In fact, our mission is radical inclusion. And there's a sign on the wall that says, work your quirk. And uh, I joined shortly after my accident where I lost my arm. And, uh, and, on the, oh, and I remember we did this exercise the first day. And they said, if you could take a pill to take away your disability, would you take that pill? And out of everybody in that whole room, I was the only one that said, yeah, of course I would take that pill. I mean, I, I couldn't even imagine preferring the body that I have now than the one I used to have. But every day I learned something. Every, like, there's a group there called the Downbeats, and they're four singers with Down syndrome. And I mean, these guys are amazing. And their lead singer is Laura Mullen. And I remember we opened one night at a theater and everything went wrong. And it was one of those nights where props were breaking and people were forgetting lines and a fire broke out backstage. Well, we got it out pretty fast, but the sprinkler system came on and people were running out into the freezing cold February night. The ambulances were showing up and fire trucks. Oh, it was pandemonium. And Laura turns to me and says, I can't work like this. There's another person in the company named Ingrid, and Ingrid has aphasia, which uh, makes it really difficult for thoughts to become words. And uh, one day, Ingrid turned to me and she said, before my aphasia, I used to feel, I think, therefore I am. But now I know we come from a deeper place. Now I know I am, therefore I think. And when she said that, I thought of Rumi's beautiful love poem, before right doing, before wrong doing, there is a field and I will meet you there. And why Shakespeare put the lover, the lunatic, and the poet in imagination all one, because they go behind the mirror. They go behind what we think of as possible. Now, over the past few months, I've been working with the state of Minnesota, interviewing uh, young people to try to help them find jobs and uh, find employment. And I interviewed, I decided to interview my friend, Michael, who's an actor at Interact. And I've known him for about 10 years. But until I heard him tell his story for this project, I never realized the barriers he'd overcome to stay at Interact. So Michael has autism. He's black. He's 20 years old. And uh, he's living with his mother. And he'd worked low-paying jobs, you know, do janitorial services and things. But then he found Interact. And, oh, man, he found the calling of his life. But into it, about five years, his mother decided to move to North Dakota. And Michael had to decide whether to stay at Interact or move with his mother. And he got on Craigslist and he found an apartment. He began living on his own. He even started doing his own finances. 
He had emotional support from Anorak, but he mainly did everything on his own resolve and his persistence. And he found that place, Interac, and there was no way he was going to lose it. But then I noticed in these interviews, almost all the people like Michael are participating in this project because they want to give back. And they, they want to help people that have had some of the challenges they have. They want to help their community. And I'm wondering how many people right now that I'm talking to uh, were helped by somebody or know somebody that's in need and want to give back. I feel so grateful to this community, to our community right here in helping people with disabilities to find a more meaningful, independent life. And this brings me back to Interact. Okay, we're in Australia. And I wrote a play that we were performing in this park. And there were 5,000 people on the side of this hill. And we get done with our part of the show. And then two opera stars, Teddy Rhodes and Simon O'Neill, take the stage. And uh, they sing these beautiful operas. And we're supposed to join them at the end for the finale. But the Sydney Symphony said they didn't have the music long enough. And could we finish on a solo? Teddy Rhodes said he would take it. And we were crushed. We'd worked a year on that piece. Teddy Rhodes finishes the solo. And then the audience, 5,000 people are on their feet. He reaches into his back, pulls out a piece of music, and he says, you know, I was looking at this. And I think if we go to this other stage in the park, there's, you know, uh, there's an upright piano and I can play this. 5,000 people didn't bat an eye. And they go to that stage. And with the voices of angels, our choir took them uh, before right, before wrong, to that place where I am, therefore I think. And that was the first time, the first of many times, there's no way. I would have taken that pill to take away my disability. I actually prefer the person I am now than the one I used to be. And with that, I want to finish with a poem. Uh, this poem is uh, called The Stars, because we're all pieces of stars. In case you don't know, the Earth doesn't have enough minerals to create life, so we needed stars and comets to crash into the planet. Like iron, we get iron from the stars. And so this is a poem about the stars. Uh, some of the things I've learned being in this constellation. Um, there are families I give my blood and families I share my blood. I've learned that knowledge is acquired, but wisdom is recognized. I've learned that love thrives in audacity, dies in carelessness, and hides in simple gestures. I've learned there's the trip you plan, and then there's the trip you take. And that home has gone from a place that is to one I remember, to one I now create, where I know the name of the God, what's funny, what's edible, what's sacred, and now where I will find you. So I'm looking up to the stars, and I know now, though not burning any longer, some still send their light. So I'm looking to the past and the future. I'm looking to home. And somewhere between where I stand and they send their light, we meet. Me looking to the heavens and the stars looking down at what it's like to be alive. Thank you. Hi, once again, this is John Fita, AUCD's Executive Director. Thank you, Kevin, for that wonderful essay. Your themes of inclusion and belonging remind us that our presence and perspective as individuals with disabilities is valued and needed, especially in the context of tonight's theme of inclusive science. We appreciate your participation in the gala and the gift of your storytelling. During tonight's program, we celebrated, we learned, and we laughed. It's a positive reminder of who we are and what we stand for as a network. AUCD is a nationwide community of experts in every state and territory that partners with people with disabilities, promoting inclusion, dignity, respect, equity, health, and well-being. Throughout our network, AUCD centers are conducting inclusive and accessible research that includes people with disabilities at every point in the process. They are preparing and training the next generation of disability competent experts who will advance our goal of inclusive research and also work towards systems change to ensure that access to the research process is accessible and understandable to all. So thank you again for joining us. And please continue to follow AUCD on our social media platforms, on our website, and during our next annual conference in November, 
as we continue to elevate the work of the AUCD network, informing others of our stories and priorities, and through research, training, and service, championing the priorities of our partners living with disabilities. Thank you. Andres Gallegos. John, thank you so very much. It's been my absolute pleasure to serve as your MC tonight. This now concludes the 2022 AUCD Gala. This program recording will be available on the Gala's website at www.aucdforall.org. That's www.aucd, the number four, all.org, and on AUCD's YouTube channel. Congratulations to all of our honorees. No pressure, but know that 64 million of us will continue to count on you as you continue your critically important work and advocacy. Thank you to all of our speakers and sponsors for their support and participation in this year's virtual event. You've helped make this a very special evening. And thank you to each and every one of you who attended this evening's event to celebrate inclusive science. Gracias. Muy buenas noches. Be well, everyone. Thank you and good night. Thank you everyone for attending the 2022 AUCD for All Virtual Gala, celebrating leadership and inclusive science. A special thanks goes out to our sponsors of tonight's event. Many have been announced throughout the program, but to read the full list of our sponsors, please visit www.aucdforall.org. Produced by Block by Block Creative. A wheelchair user on a ramp adjusts a white square within a large red letter B to complete the block by block logo.